The next method is get order by token. Most of the statement again remains exactly the same. If we scroll down and in similar situation as we had before, we're just removing this assignment here to the token, replacing this with a question mark. This returning this underscore db fetch one and as the second parameter we're going to put the token uh, obviously here and then after this if statement we simply return uh, null just to make sure obviously that something's returned from this uh, method next method right underneath is get order items again this id rather than underscore as it's a public property now which comes from the application class and then we're removing this ass assignment of the int val with the ID here. Again, we assign a question mark, which is a placeholder for our ID inside of the fetch all method. And obviously we need to change this db to underscore db, which is our protected property now. Uh, sorry, protected object, obviously. Uh, so we've got get order items done. Let's scroll down to the approve method. Now our approve method, but a first look at it, uh, straight away you can see that it's two complex if statement here we've got two statements which check for so many things so again let's create a new private method which checks for all this and we only call it inside of this proof method and if it's all good then we're going to proceed with our statement so what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to cut all this is an empty array and is an empty result so if I cut this and scroll up a little bit right before our approve method and I'm going to create a new private method, so function underscore is valid approval. And we pass array as the first value, sorry, as first parameter, and then result as the second. Now inside of this method, we're going to return, and we're going to start with the bracket, then semicolon after that. And I'm going to paste what I've just cut from the previous statement. So is an empty array is an empty result and now I'm going to concatenate those and and now I'm going to cut all these items from the second if statement and we check in array key exists tx and underscore id then we go for payment status and then custom so if all these are true then we can proceed so if we scroll down to our approve method and we can now remove the second if statement and a closing bracket for it remove the indent here and then we check if this underscore is valid approval and we pass the array and then we pass the result and now we know whether the values obviously whether everything is okay and if it's okay obviously we're proceeding with the statement otherwise we simply return false right after this if statement now, our active statement uh, is, uh, assignment here uh, remains exactly the same. And so does uh, this for each statement here, which is basically collecting the, creating a string with all the values uh, received from PayPal. But we're going to change the SQL statement and then obviously uh, this call of the query here. So uh, rather than removing this, I'm going to keep it because I'm going to be cutting and pasting this into uh, our new statement. So we return this underscore this underscore db and we go for the update and we're going to be updating this what is it about is this underscore uh, table because it's our orders table and then array and then semicolon of the obviously after all this another thing we need to uh, pass as a third parameter to this update method is the the id of the record we want to update in this case we go we are going to be updating this by token so we're going to use array uh, custom field which is sent for, uh, back from PayPal and we send uh, the token to it so the field token we're looking for the record which has this specific token assigned to it inside of the update array we go going to put first of all PayPal status so PP underscore status and that's going to be active variable which we've created earlier above actually here as you can see then we have the txn id so if i cut this and paste it here and then that's going there like directly from this array then we have payment status and it's going to be array payment status 
Then we have IPN, which is this uh, out basically, which we implode in here, all this string together. Uh, then response, which will be result. And that's all. So we can now scroll down and remove this redundant code. And we only obviously keep this return uh, statement here.